the wisteria is one of the most recognizable, beloved, and celebrated lamps created at the Tiffany Studios. Tiffany marketed his lamps as both articles of utility and objects of art, and certainly the wisteria is the embodiment of those two principles. Regardless of whether it was lit or unlit, the boldly colored purple glass and solid bronze base would announce its presence in any room. This lamp was designed by a woman named Clara Driscoll, who was the manager of the women's glass cutting department at the Tiffany Studios. She oversaw a small team of women known as the Tiffany Girls. Driscoll and some of her colleagues were responsible for designing many of Tiffany's most famous lampshades. Tiffany believed that women had a superior sense of color, which made them better glass selectors, and that their small fingers made them more readily able to handle the tiny pieces of glass required for many of the little lampshades. The wisteria lamp is a case in point. The design includes just under 2,000 tiny pieces of glass, and each piece of glass had to be selected, cut, wrapped in copper foil, and soldered together. It's no wonder that this was one of the most expensive lamp models that the Tiffany Studios produced. In 1906, it retailed for a whopping $400. That may not sound like a lot of money to us today, but considering that you could purchase a lamp for $1 in 1906, this was obviously a luxury object. Look at the flowers. They're very uniform in color and shape. How to select glass in such a way that you can make out individual blossoms, that the design isn't static or just downright boring. It took great skill and great patience to successfully select a wisteria lampshade. In a letter to her family, Clara Driscoll recounted a disastrous event that occurred while the Tiffany girls were working on a rush order of wisteria shades. She writes, The wisteria lamps were in an awful rush, and the girls were going to work overtime in the afternoon. At three o'clock, a most tragic thing happened. The scrubwoman was cleaning the floor under the easel when she suddenly decided to get up. Of course, she took the whole easel with her, and immediately the work of four girls for six days was in about 9,000 pieces over the floor in an undistinguishable heap. The catastrophe was so great that there was not even a word of regret. About six of us fell to work without a word to repair damages. As for the scrubwoman, she looked around in a dazed way for a minute and then calmly went on scrubbing, the only untroubled and carefree person in the room. It was possible to save most of it, but an awful piece of work to find the place of each little piece. 